Hey everyone, my name is Philip Sevlin and I want to talk about something called wicked problems. Now a wicked problem is mainly characterized by two things. One, um, the solution to solving the problem is unknown and pretty much impossible to define from the beginning. And second, the actual problem is extremely ill-defined to the point where you don't actually know what the actual problem is. An example that uh, it's been given before was a designer um, who got called to a hospital because the hospital had a problem with the patients coming to the hospital not being able to um, find their way around all the buildings and where to go. So what they asked the designer to do was uh, redesign the signs that they had around the hospital so people would be, it would be easier for people to figure out where to go. However, as the designer kept working on the problem, he figured out it wasn't actually so much the signs that was a problem, but, and it, you know, he could fix them and maybe that would help a little bit, but there was actually a far better solution to the problem than fixing the signs. Um, actually, the problem started way earlier that people even had problems figuring out the entrance to the hospital. And when they got there, there was actually already a person to give them directions but he wasn't actually used to his full capacity. So instead of redesigning the signs, they should make directions to the hospital clearer from the beginning and then have the person there at the entrance have small maps and be able to better explain where people should go. And that would actually be a better design solution than simply redesigning the signs. Now, you might ask yourself, why is this really important for, for instance, graphic designers? Well, the, prob uh, the, the reason that's important is that pretty much all design problems are wicked problems. And designers have a tendency to be problem-defining oriented. Meaning that you spend a great deal of time figuring out what the problem is, so you can put it in a box, have it analyzed, and then say, okay, so we need to do this. However, this has been shown again and again that in solving wicked problems this is probably the worst thing to do and in a lot of studies with the science students it shows that people that spend a lot of time on problem defining generally don't get very good results in the end. Now the way that you are supposed to solve wicked problems which again is most design problems is in an ongoing creative process where you take small chunks of information, work on it, almost in a trial and error kind of situation, see how it works, you perhaps like that, but then you run into a new problem and then you do the design process once again. And then over a course of a lot of small circles, you come to an end. And that's because, as I said in the beginning, wicked problems can't be defined from the beginning and because of that you can't know the actual course um, you have to take to automatically solve the problem in the end. There's no formula for that since wicked problems will always be ill-defined. So the way you solve them is by keep going at it basically. This has also been shown before that expert designers um, and expert learners for that matter um, do better designs by going in quicker and basically just getting, getting at it. Um, they don't spend a lot of time defining the problem, analyzing the problem. Um, not saying you shouldn't do that, you should do that. Of course you should get um, a picture, uh, a general idea of what the problem is. Um, but the basic idea is that the quicker you get into it and the quicker you start working on it, the better the chances are that the solution that you come up in, with in the end will actually be better. This has also been shown before that people that get stuck in the problem defining area generally not well there's been cases where it shows they don't ever actually get out of it um, an example was there was um, done some research on a design contest where people had to build a small truck basically a small miniature truck and had to throw different things and be able to do different things and luckily the two teams that they analyzed were pretty much the best ones because one of the teams uh, one and the other one never actually completed the assignment and the team that won, it was shown that they basically just kept going. They didn't um, spend a whole lot of time defining the overall problem. They just got at it, took a small chunk, said, okay, we got this, let's start moving on this. And kind of went with everything. And then, you know, 
just a smooth process, whereas the team that never actually got anything done, they spent a whole lot of time analyzing the problem and saying, okay, this, 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 they, they basically tried to do everything at the same time and tried to make a huge picture in their minds of how to do everything and what the process should be. And in the end, they actually ran out of time and never actually finished the product for this contest. So you can see in this way, it's, it's very important that the, the whole moral of this is that you, you just need to go at it. And while I definitely agree that it's important to analyze the needs of your client and analyze the problem so you can get an idea of what you should do, it is also important to realize that the best way to solve these problems is in fact just start working on them. Get in there, make stuff, see what happens. That is the best creative process for going through Ricket problems. And that's pretty much it. I'm looking forward to doing more videos and I hope you uh, learned something from this. I'll see you next time.